Haider Nauzad is one of Iraq's top rowers. Okay. Let's go. Okay. He's on his way to his daily training session on the banks of the River Tigris. It's a white knuckle ride through the mean streets of Baghdad. Next month, Iraqi athletes will be taking part in the Olympic Games in Athens. Haider has been told he stands a very good chance of being one of them. Alaa Hikmat is Iraq's number one sprinter. After an exhausting day studying for exams, she's taken four buses to get to her training session. 32 Iraqi athletes are going to Athens this summer, and Alaa is the only woman amongst them. They're up against it more than most, training for the Olympic dream against a backdrop of chaos. Life in the city isn't easy. Every day, another hardship, more attacks. Haider never knows what to expect when he gets down to the Tigris. He and his mates only practice on the stretch of water between 17th Bridge and Martyrs Bridge. Everywhere else is deemed just too dangerous. Today is a case in point. They're pulling a body out of the river on the opposite bank. For a sportsman training in an area like this, well, psychologically it's pretty devastating. Once I was training close to the shore and there was an explosion. Shrapnel fell in the water. It wasn't very nice. Much of the rowing team was equipped through the Food for All program after the first Gulf War. But most of the team's canoes were destroyed during the last one. Others were looted. They managed to buy some of them back from criminal gangs. The original rowing club has been something of a casualty too, hence the rather impromptu setup. We had a proper place to train as rowers, but it was taken over by the Americans. It became a target and it's been destroyed. It'll take at least a year to put it right again. It's not a bowl of cherries if you want to be an Iraqi Olympic sprinter either. Alaa lives in a rough part of town with a brother and a mother, a retired school teacher. She has to juggle college and training, and she's realistic about her chances in the 100 and 200 meters. The simplest thing an Olympic athlete needs is time in a training camp. I have been given a month in a camp, but even for an ordinary event, an athlete should get four months training. I'm only getting one month and this is for Olympics. It's just not enough time for me to improve. Her living quarters are pretty humble, but look at the place where she trains. It's virtually derelict. Alar didn't have to qualify for Athens. She got in with a wild card instead. The International Olympic Committee gives them out to ensure athletes from around the world can take part. All of the Iraqis, apart from the football team, are participating on this basis. And with facilities like this, it's no surprise. This is where we take showers. Let me show you around, guys. This is where the guests stay. Well, and here, we could film a horror film. And these, well, these are the toilet facilities. This is where I get changed, but I always keep an eye in case someone comes in because there's no door, as you can see. The al Kashafa Stadium was built under the British mandate in the 1920s. No other international athletes would even consider training here, but Alaa has no choice. Today, she's exhausted. The session isn't going too well. But a coach, the man who discovered her at a school competition last year, is trying to look on the bright side. My wish for Allah is that she can get some sort of a result in Athens. But hoping for that is really beyond us. Our best running times are no match for the other international ones. 
The Olympics are a test for the finest athletes in the world. Kiefer Street. This is where Haider has lived with his family for 17 years. It's a scary part of town. Our driver once had to come here to buy back his own car that had just been stolen. For most people, Kiefer Street is the end of the line. This is one of the reasons why going to Athens is so important for Haider. It's his ticket out of here. He takes us up onto the roof where the family all sleep on these hot nights. This is my brother's place. This is where I sleep. This is where my other brother sleeps. And over here is where my parents and sister sleep. As one of Iraq's top rowers, Haidar's got the dedication and he's got the medals to prove it too. In Asia, in silver, one silver and two bronze. In India, But today, Haidar has got bad news. He's just been told he hasn't got a wild card after all. They went to a Filipino instead. I'm really sad that I won't be there to participate in this great festival and gain experience. But I'm happy for my colleagues. I've only just met Allah, although I'd heard of her before. I am happy for her, but I'm sorry for myself. God willing. I'll get another chance. Did you want to have a look at my running shoes? Alaa's going to the Olympics with a pair of second-hand trainers. I won two championships in these. These are the lucky shoes. <laughs> Alaa's a pre-Olympic camp in Germany now. Haidar's accepted he's not going to Greece. He's back in the Tigris though, still rowing, still dreaming of success.